Hello. Let's try to find instantaneous rate of change for the given problem. Okay. The problem states that a stone is thrown up from the edge of a cliff and then it falls into the sea below. The height of the stone after t seconds is described by the function h of t equals to minus 5 t square plus 18 t plus 8 where h of t is measured in meters. Estimate the instantaneous rate of change of height at 2 seconds. Well, there are a couple of ways to do it. One way is that we could find a point 2 and a point very close to 2 and then their difference should give us instantaneous rate of change. So what I'm trying to say is we can always find two points which are very very close to one another, right? If they are very close to one another then the slope of the secant between them will give us instantaneous rate of change, correct? That's what I'm trying to say. So in that case what we do is that's one method and let me just write down this method on the side because I'm going to use a different method to solve this. So what I'm trying to say is that the instantaneous rate of change is equals to h of let's say 2.001 you can use calculator find this minus h of 2 right because you, this is the point of interest over 2.001 minus 2. So if you calculate this you get the slope of the secant and that will give you the instantaneous rate of change of height with respect to time at t equals to 2 seconds, right? So when it is estimate instantaneous rate of change of height at 2 seconds, you can always do this method, right? And get your answer. Now, I'll follow a method which is difference quotient method and that is kind of a very general method of finding instantaneous rate of change. I kind of prefer it because teaching you this that method once can solve many types of different problems. Okay, so there what we do is instead of taking the second point close to say point zero zero one away, we say let the point be only h distance away, h time away, where h is approaching zero. Now h could be 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, 0 .0001, whatever the case may be. At times it is also defined by the accuracy of result you need. This will give you 3 decimal place accuracy, correct? 0 0.001 will give you 3 decimal place accuracy, okay? <clears throat> now here I am showing you the general method of doing it. So what we do here is we find instantaneous rate of change. I'm just use, using this rate of change symbol here. And then we say h of t plus h minus h of t over t plus h minus t. Okay. So that also gives me the slope of the secant where the point is at t and the other point is at t plus h. So it's the same thing kind of. Do you see that? Right, so so this is called difference quotient method. So we'll use this method and show you how to get the result. Advantage of this is that you could find instantaneous rate of change of height at two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. You know that it becomes versatile and easy to use. Okay, so that's what we'll try to get here now. Okay, now let's do it. So what is h of t plus h? So h of t plus h will be that I need to replace this t with t plus h, right? So we say, so h of rate of change will be, so first term I'm writing minus 5, and instead of t, I'm writing t plus h, right? So t plus h whole square, and then we have plus 18, and then it's t plus h, right, plus 8. So this is my term which corresponds to h t plus h, right, minus h of t, which is the function given. So given function is minus 5 t square plus 18 t plus 8, correct? And all this is divided by this, right? So all this is divided by t plus h minus t, which is h, right? Which is h. So 
this is how it is right now here what we are doing is where what is h where h cannot be equal to 0 okay h is not equal to 0 but h is very very small as compared to 1 and it could be like 0 0.001 0 0.001 depending on what accuracy is required so that is the condition ring. correct now here to continue with this so we will expand this and see what result do we get so instead of writing everything over h i am writing 1 over h here so that you know i don't have that kind of a fraction thing right and let me put a bigger bracket and then i'll expand this so it is minus 5 t plus h whole square is t square plus 2ab which is 2 times t times h plus h square so that's the first term and then we have plus 18t plus 18h plus 8 right minus minus 5t square plus 18t plus 8 correct now we can simplify it further so we'll open the brackets and then see what happens so say minus 5t square i'm multiplying every Thing with minus right minus 5 so minus 10 th minus 5 h square correct okay? and then this is plus 18 t plus 18 h plus 8 minus 5 t square plus 18 t plus 8 right now, if you see this, we can simplify it further by, you know, this term and this term will cancel out minus 5. And similarly, 18t will cancel out with 18t and 8 will also cancel out with 8 minus 8 is 0, right? Therefore, it, it can be simplified as 1 over h. And here we are left with minus 10th minus 5h square plus 18h yeah, that's it now every term has a h in it so we can factor out h so we get h over h and within bracket we have minus 10 I could have taken minus also it doesn't matter minus 10 th minus sorry minus 10 we took out h so h won't come here I fact I'm factoring out h right so h won't come here right minus 5 h this is square so plus 18 correct so this is what we get and now now h and h can be cancelled out is that okay now what are you left with you are left with minus 18 t minus 5 h plus 18 so so this is equals to minus 10 t not 18 minus 10 t minus 5 h plus 18 right now, if h is very, very small as compared to 1, for example, like this, 0 0.0001, like this, right, then this is a negligible term, and therefore, I can write this as minus 10t, let me write approximately, because I've done some approximation here, plus 18, oh, 10t, right, 10t plus 18, so approximation here is, I'm thinking this as 0, right, approaching 0 I'm not writing equal to 0 approaching 0 says negligible we say where h is very very less as compared to 1 right so there it is now this becomes a very very general equation for us and now we can say what is the instantaneous rate at t equals to 2 that means we have to just plug in 2 here and we get minus 10 times 2 plus 8 and which is minus 20 plus 8 which is minus 12 so so that is how uh, we can get our answer oh it was 18 i uh, sorry 18 18 and not 12 but 2 yeah 18 18 and yeah minus 2 we get correct so that is how we get how this method is good this method is very good imagine if i say find instantaneous rate of change of height at t equals to 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and 4. Then if you follow this method, you have to do those four calculations four times. Here we do it once and next time we say, well, what do you want? 
you want this time for at the rate of change at t equals to 3 in that case I'll plug in 3 here right and get my answer correct so like that you can always get your answer for different points correct and becomes very very easy to solve I hope you appreciate the method it is at 3 it will be minus 10 times 3 plus 18 correct and then you can get your answer correct so like this you can do minus 30 plus 18 like that so that will be minus 12 and here most important is whenever you do this don't forget the units the units are change in height is in meters and time is in seconds right so write down answer as you should write answer very clearly answer is the rate of change at t equals to 2 is equals to minus 2 meters per second now what does minus means so minus means at that, at that time it is falling so it's like negative do you understand the stone is falling at that time so it's not rising it's falling so it's falling that's what it means okay I hope you understand the method if there is any problem or confusion do let me know write down your comments and I'll be glad to answer your queries okay thank you